Hello, my dear friends. Welcome to Top Scholars. Today, we'll be discussing about Arrhenius' theory of acids and bases. So, friends, let's first discuss about Arrhenius' theory. Now, friends, Arrhenius was a Swedish scientist who was the one to put forth the theory of acids and bases in the year 1887. Now, what did Arrhenius actually do? Arrhenius' theory of acids and bases simply defines acids and bases. So, according to Arrhenius' theory, acid is a substance which produces H plus ions when dissolved in water, which means that if you take an acid and dissolve it in water, an acid on dissolving in water gives you H plus ions. For example, HCl, that is hydrochloric acid, H2SO4 that is sulfuric acid, H2CO3 that is carbonic acid. All these three substances on dissolving in water give H plus ion, right? Which means that all these three are acids. So, as I said, let's take the first example that is HCl that is hydrochloric acid, right? So, I have hydrochloric acid. What I have done is I have dissolved it in water. Now, as I said, acids are substances which on dissolving in water give you H plus ions. That is, this HCl dissociates in water. Dissociating means splitting up into ions. That is cation and an ion. So, what happens? Yes, HCl on dissolving in water undergoes dissociation to give you H plus ion and Cl minus ion. So, here as you can see, We've got H plus ion, right? Which means that HCl is an acid according to Arrhenius theory. But what about bases? Yes, bases are those substances which on dissolving in water give you OH minus ions. For example, NaOH that is sodium hydroxide. The next one we have is CaOH twice that is calcium hydroxide. Now, both these substances when you dissolve it in water, they dissociate, they split up to give you ions. And which ion do they give? Yes, OH minus ion. For example, if I take NaOH and I dissolve it in water, on dissolving in water, NaOH dissociates, it splits up into ions. That is, it gives you Na plus ion and OH minus ions. So, here again you can see I get OH minus ions, which means that it is an acid or a base. Yes, it is a base. Since According to Arrhenius theory, a base is a substance which produces OH minus ions when dissolved in water. Now, friends, we know what are acids and what are bases, right? According to the Arrhenius theory. Now, let's classify these acids and bases, right? Now, friends, acids can be classified as strong acid. Now, what do we mean by strong acid? Now, if I talk about acids, we just now discussed. That acids are substances which give, yes, H plus ions when they are dissolved in water. That is, an acid is a substance which produces H plus ion when they are dissolved in water, right? So, a strong acid is an acid which dissociates completely into H plus ions and concerned acidic radical. Remember, friends, a strong acid is the one which dissociates completely to give you H plus ions and the concerned acidic radical. Remember this. For example, HCl, yes, hydrochloric acid, H2SO4, that is sulfuric acid, HNO3, that is nitric acid. All these three acids are strong acid. Why? Because all these three, when dissolved in water, dissociate completely to give you H plus ions and the concerned acidic radical. Let's take an example to understand this, right? Now, if I tell you I have 100 molecules of HCl, right? And what I do is I dissolve these 100 molecules of HCl in water. Now, we said that strong acid is the one which dissociates completely, right? So, when I dissolve HCl in water, all the 100 molecules of HCl dissociate, which means that HCl dissociates completely, right? So, all the 100 molecules dissociate to give me H plus ions and the concerned acidic radical which means that HCl is a strong acid since it undergoes complete dissociation. What about a weak acid? Yes, a weak acid would be completely opposite that of a strong acid, right? We said strong acid is the one which dissociates completely. So, what would be a weak acid? A weak acid would be the one which does not undergo complete dissociation. Which means that if I take a weak acid and I dissolve it in water, what happens is, 
सम मॉलिक्यूल्स ऑफ द एसिड डिसोसिएट टू गिव मी एच प्लस आयन एंड द कंसर्न एसिडिक रेडिकल वेयर आर देयर आर सम मॉलिक्यूल्स व्हिच रिमेन अनडिसोसिएटेड व्हिच मींस दैट इन द एक्वेस सॉल्यूशन ऑफ अ वीक एसिड आई विल बी हैविंग एच प्लस आयंस एंड कंसर्न एसिडिक रेडिकल इन अ स्मॉल प्रोपोर्शन वेयर आर i have a large proportion of undissociated molecules of the acid remember friends a weak acid is the one which does not dissociate completely which means that aqueous solution of a weak acid will contain a small proportion of h plus ions in the concerned acidic radical whereas it will contain a large proportion of the undissociated molecules of the acid for example h2co3 that is carbonic acid CH3COOH that is acetic acid both of them are weak acids because they do not dissociate completely let me give you one example so that you understand it better right let's take acetic acid suppose i give you 100 molecules of acetic acid and what you do is you simply dissolve these 100 molecules in water now we said that a weak acid is the one which does not dissociate completely which means that is it that all the 100 molecules are going to dissociate no it is not going to dissociate completely that means out of these 100 molecules only 60 molecules undergo dissociation and the remaining 40 remain undissociated right so the aqueous solution of the weak acid will contain small proportion of the h plus ions in the concerned acidic radical whereas large proportion of the undissociated molecules of the acid to learn more about this topic download top scholars app